Hello you and welcome to some kind of fox content and welcome back to Chicken Police Painted Red where we are continuing on with our investigations which has brought us to uh, this brothel where now we have to talk to Madame Savas apparently um not really sure why the investigation took us here but here we are so uh, without further ado let's just get on with it Tribal artifacts. Do you think so? It's the art of my people. Uh, crocodiles? There are many kinds of crocodile in the wilderness, Mr. Featherland. This is the art of the Nylonites. Oh, is that why the uh, brothel is called something something Nile, right? Ah, sweltering man, Nile or sweltering whatever it's Nile. called? Yeah, there it is, the sweltering Nile. It's a river, Mr. Featherland. My ancestors lived by this river a long time ago. I also feel thankful that we called her a crocodile, not an alligator. That could have possibly brought us into oh, some problems. Interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, uh, what else can we... There's some tribal artifacts, and then there's a dead clock. How does that make sense? Is that the time already? Have you noticed your clock's not working? Well, even a broken clock is right two times a day, right? How observant you are. That clock isn't meant to show the time. It's a decoration. A memento. A memento of maybe when a crime was committed? It's beautiful. Indeed. Uh... Do I do anything? There's something weird about that clock. Hmm, okay, there's something weird here. 912. Maybe it's like a code that I need for something. Okay, um, do I have anything uh, else? There are books here on quite a variety of topics. Yeah, the death of a horse, being that we live in a uh, animal kingdom world kind of deal here, that sounds like, uh, you know, uh, there are books here on quite a variety of topics. Is that all you're gonna say? Then why can I check these different books? There are books here. Why can I check all the books if all he's gonna say is there's a variety of books? There are books here. Well, that doesn't make sense, does it? There are books here. Ah, okay, fine, fine, fine. I probably that's probably a code to something too. Everything's got them codes around here. Do I need to look at the picture of her? In a sort of, you know, sensual manner. Would she appreciate that even? Also, why do you have that in your own office? That That's... okay. I, I mean, that's not too bad. Probably won't get demonetized. Well, we're not getting monetized anyway. But. What a painting. Congratulations, ma'am. Marty. Yes. It's beautiful indeed. It's more than 40 years old. You know, I was considered pretty then. I mean, who's to say you're not still pretty? Oh, don't say that. And there you go! You still look great, ma'am. Thank you. It feels good, but no. There's no need for lies. Those days are long gone. Every age has its truth and its beauty. For me, beauty is not in the looks. Anymore. That's a good outlook on life! I agree, ma'am. There you go! This is all turning out pretty well. Okay, okay, okay. What can we, wait, wait, wait. Is there anything on the table that I can... I probably should do this. Okay, every kind of book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, she is the legendary Madame Zavas. Let me introduce myself properly, ma'am. Mr. Zadino, I know who you are. And I also know your partner. The legend of the chicken police is always one step ahead of the chicken police. I see this room is filled with legends here, Madam Save Us. Well, uh, let me just check what happens if I put it on autoplay so I don't have to click all the time and possibly misclick with my stupid fat finger. What if I do this? Hello? Autoplay? Uh. 
Thank you. That's flattering. Hmm. I'll have a go. May I ask what you are looking for exactly? Here, on this night? You know, that's an interesting question. The card we've shown your lovely colleague... ...belongs to an old friend of ours, whom we haven't seen for a long time here. And the name? Unfortunately, no, Mr. Santino. That's confidential information. In my line of work, discretion is everything. Well, you know, in our line of work, the law is above everything. Oh, do you think so? I could tell you what your colleagues think is also above everything. But, as I said, discretion. Look, ma'am, we don't want to impose. We're conducting a private investigation, which started off as harmless. But now, it's murder. That sounds serious. It is serious. That's why we'd be grateful for your help. In that case, I'm at your service. Ask your questions, and I'm going to answer to the best of my knowledge. As long as you're not wading through muddy waters. Fortunately, I swim very well for a chicken. I swim well, too. I mean, if you're gonna do a swimming competition, maybe don't do it with a crocodile as a chicken. Also, she's gonna eat us. So don't crocodiles usually like, like really like chicken? Huh. As I was saying, it belongs to us. Only our most valuable guests have one of these. And our employees, of course. The employees too. Good to know. Can you tell me if this card belonged to a guest or an employee? No. I thought so. Yes, thank you. Lewis Hayworth is a good friend of mine. It uh, surprises me that he's a regular here. You wouldn't believe our clientele. You would be shocked. No doubt. Lewis, uh, does he come here often? Mm, not so often. Thank you for the vague answer, ma'am. The mystery is thrilling. The thrill is life itself. That was beautiful, ma'am. Tell me, have you ever seen this list? I have. Am I right to assume it has something to do with the sweltering Nile? It does, yes. But I can't tell you more about it. No. Discretion is key. Absolutely. Hmm, okay, so we're not really getting anything here. I was kind of hoping she would be like, ah, Lewis, yeah, he kills a lot of people. So, uh, go jail him. I have a feeling it's Lewis that's behind all of this. I don't know why. Do you know Natasha Katsenko personally? Yes, I do. Tell me about her. Warm-hearted, protective, quick-tempered, fierce. Yes, fierce. Thank you. Very useful. She is indeed a feisty little kitten. This place isn't just our home with the girls. It's a sanctuary. Really? How? It symbolizes why the city was founded almost a thousand years ago. You I mean, you could look at it that way. Freedom. I think. Breeding. That too. Yeah. Right, well, yeah, there we go. Do you have a problem with that? Oh, don't get me wrong. I don't. My girlfriend's a predator. Really? I'm glad to hear it. Okay. Oh god, oh no, oh no. Okay, we have a we have a it, oh no. Please, for the love of god, let me do just one of these good feet. Is everything to save us. She used to be a spy, so I'm going to take her every word with a grain of salt. She used to be a spy. Okay. Who's the who's behind the legend? Who are you really? Who's behind the legend, Miss Zavas? Who are you really? Just an animal race to survive, Mr. Featherland. And because I've been taught, I know how to survive. I always was what I had to be. And you managed to dodge my question. Clever. Well, you see, this is one of the typical elements of survival. The way of dodging a delicate question and still making the questioner believe he got the answer. 
But you're too cunning and experienced, aren't you? <laughs> you're not an easy one to fool. Ah, uh, well, I'm if trying. only it was so. Appearances, man. You should. Appearances, most of the time, are stronger and more dangerous than the truth. Uh, okay, so, listen, I need to do this good. I can't just be an average uh, chicken. I, I need to be the legendary chicken police here. You see this everything to survive. used to be a spy, something like yeah. Deceptive and survivor. And we're already doing poorly. Great. So if I ask her about, isn't it dangerous being a royalist nowadays? That should talk to her survivor thing, right? And if she really were a spy, would she just up and tell me because I asked? I think this is the right one. Isn't it dangerous being a royalist nowadays? You know, Mr. Featherland, those that are genuinely dedicated never care about danger. That's something you must know even better than I. Do you think it's my loyalty that motivates me? No, it's the money. If you do, I'm sorry to disappoint Money to buy booze. Maybe you're not loyal to the police, Mr. Featherland, but you are to your own principles and ideals. Am I right? That's true, but you're avoiding the question. Why did you stay in the king's employment after the scandals that are making half the city riot? What makes you still believe so much in the institution of monarchy? You know... I always adapt, but only to a degree where I still don't have to give up myself and my ideals for the sake of survival. You'd rather die then? Maybe it would seem too dramatic or even romantic to you, but yes, exactly. Okay, I'm sorry okay. to doubt you, but I've always thought your kind was rather compromised. Do you mean spies or crocodiles? Spies, of course. <laughs> I must disappoint you. But there aren't many groups as loyal and unwavering as the spies, Mr. Featherland. If you're telling me, ma'am, I believe you. Why did you decide to open a brothel? What is... Well, how was that bad? Uh, is it really just a luxury brothel? Ah. Uh... Uh. Why did you decide to open a brothel? You know, this place used to be an orphanage. Then after the great avian plague, a hatchery. Then, young mothers lived here who had nowhere else to go. That's when I took over. Young mothers and prostitutes. That feels like a sharp turn. No, it didn't happen like that, of course. The process took 20 years, but one thing remains the same. I wanted to help girls who had nothing and no one. To help them. And this was the best you could do, helping them sell their bodies. You see things very superficially, Mr. Featherland. We're a family who helped each other even at the worst of times, took care of each other, and what's most important, survived. Yes, survive, no matter the cost. And it's the cherry on top of the most treasured secrets of the rich and famous. Very insightful, Mr. Featherland. There's truth to that. Knowledge is power, as they say. And we know a lot about powerful animals that could be used as weapons. Or the opposite. <laughs> that could avert a war. I feel like that went well. That was a good one. Because that spoke to the survival thing, right? If I guess who the card belongs to, will you tell me? I wouldn't say that's an acceptable price for such a secret as this, but... If you guess right... I won't lie to you. Then, I will tell you you were right. Yes. Good. Let's see. The answer to my question, Natasha Katsenko. Well, Mr. Featherland, it seems the gossip about you is right. What gave it away? It couldn't have been easier. There's a beautiful woman with a mysterious past, trying to keep it a secret while someone's threatening her with the exact same thing, leaving rather unmistakable messages behind. 
Plus, we found the card on Deborah, who was her best friend and confidant. So she was either trying to hide it or destroy it forever, so no one could find out the truth. Am I right so far? Indeed, Mr. Featherland. So if I'm not mistaken, Natasha used to work for you before she met Ibn Wessler. He fell in love with her, gave her a job at the Millions Club. The rest is history. You have talent, Mr. Featherland. I'm really sorry you're not working for the government. I am working for the government. I'm a cop. Are you sure, Mr. Featherland? Touché. Touché indeed. Natasha used to work here. We can put it that way, but you know, this isn't just a workplace. She also lived here. She was part of our family. And we still love her very much. Right. That puts everything in a different light. Savas is a true survivor. Always was. And she's proud of that, even to this day. Maybe I can get her to trust me if I play to this part of her. Okay. Okay, that a little bit. Uh, dangerous. You tried to shape her into your image. No. Why did you take her in? Maybe you saw yourself in Natasha. You tried to protect her from what? Everyone in this city thinks you're dangerous. Why is that? It's one of these two. Eh? You tried to protect her from what? Natasha came to me penniless, cold to the bone and wounded. She was only 17 years old. Even if she were my enemy, I would have taken her in until she recovered. Yes. I'm like that. I was raised to be like that. Haven't you seen any opportunities for profit? Or were you guided by pure animal goodness? Is that so hard for you to believe? I think that uh, worldly women like you try to turn every position to their advantage. I hope I don't offend you. On the contrary. <laughs> but no. I didn't see any opportunities in a girl who could barely speak our language, who was starving and wounded and obviously running from something. In fact, I was taking unnecessary risks because of her. Hmm. Okay, that was a little good still. You knew you were taking a risk, yet you still took her in. Why? You're capable of anything to keep your secrets hidden, am I right? Your stone cold image is just a mask, isn't it? You knew you were taking a risk, yet you still took her in. Why? I don't know, Mr. Featherland. These things can't always be rationally explained. Not even when I've lived my whole life based on reason, on logic, almost every step calculated. So Natasha came and turned your whole life upside down. She's like that, isn't she? It's in her nature, yes. Poor thing can't help it. She's like a tornado. She usually takes everything with her. That's quite an apt metaphor. But I have to agree. Did she sweep you away, too? Well, she did a beautiful I don't song. Know yet, madam. I'm clinging firmly to the ground. Okay, still doing good. Do you know where Natasha came from before Clawville? Do you know where Natasha came from before Clawville? Naturally. The poor dear couldn't even deny it. Even her name's eloquent, her accent, but mostly her manners, Mr. Featherland. She's from Stovos, and she belonged to the upper class of Stavonian social circles. She could barely even speak the language when I first met her. That's all you know about her. An ex-spy like you must have checked up on her new protege's past. That's the most exciting thing. Yes, I have. Multiple times putting my most treasured connections to good use. But nobody found anything. Natasha's trail could only be traced back to this Dovonian border. What happened in that country, no one knows. It's rather curious, don't you think? It is, Mr. Featherland. Yes, curious. That's why I've always been rather fond of Natasha. 
Did it touch you deeply when she left you? Indeed, it did. Zaymos is protective. It seems she's dedicating her whole life to her protégés. If I concentrate on that, then maybe she'll open up to me. Okay, so... If we can just get her to talk about, like, oh, protecting people, that's good. Uh, no, not this one. Didn't it occur to you that you could exploit Natasha and Ibn's relationship? That seems like the exact opposite of what I would want. Why did you let her leave with Wessler, or have you kept in touch? This one, maybe? I mean, one of these two, because these are both, like... Do you still protect her to some degree? Like this one. Do you still... Are you still talking to her? Are you still protecting her? And this one is... Why would you leave her with a gangster if you wanted to protect her? Uh, I feel like there's more info to be gathered in this one while still remaining a safe bet. Maybe? Why I don't know. Let her leave with Wessler? What else could I have done? Wessler is a handsome, rich, powerful animal. And Natasha fell in love with him. If anything, I know you can't stand in the way of a woman in love. There's nothing more dangerous, Mr. Featherland. I've been in this job for more than 20 years, but I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> you see? You learn something new every day if you have an open mind. <laughs> yes. Fuck! That wasn't a good one. Are you angry at her for leaving, afraid she might blab secrets? No. When was the last time you saw her, Madame Zavos? Maybe around two months ago. There was a ball attended by Ibn Wessler, his beautiful mate Natasha, and myself. Yes. Was she herself? Did you feel like she was afraid or worried about something? On the contrary, she was unrestrained, free, radiant. She was in love. Yes. In her own unique way. What do you mean? You know Natasha loves on a different level than most Clawville women. Or most women in the wilderness, in fact. Maybe it's because of the Stovonian origins. Perhaps it's something else. So you didn't notice anything strange about her? Well, if anything could be called strange, it was that I saw a woman positively floating above the ground, who previously used to stand on it with two feet. I see. Thank you, madam. Okay, that's good. And my mouse stopped working again. I don't know what all of a sudden came over my mouse, but it just it just stops working. How did you out of feel nowhere. when you learned Natasha was going to leave? Honestly? I was very hurt. I loved her as a daughter. How would you have felt? I couldn't say. And I still couldn't stop her, and you know why? Of course I do. Because you loved her. You've been in my shoes before, am I right, Detective? Yes, I can feel you have. This isn't about me, madam. Please stop changing the subject. I have felt betrayed on a certain level. Yes, and offended. And alone. Even amongst all my friends. Mm, so they had a deeper relationship. Only in myself, Mr. Featherland. But I have a hunch you know this feeling very well. Yes, you're right. Well, thank you for your time, madam. Anytime, detective. Yes. Anytime. Did I do better? I did! I'm getting better! Now I am a decent cop. And I got 60% accuracy instead of just 40. Uh, that's how you do it, partner. Not quite like old times, but you still got it. The old ro rooster still remembers some tricks, eh? Natasha worked at the sweltering Nile brothel before Ibn Wessler discovered her and got her out of there. Please, gentlemen, wait here a moment. I would like to show you something that could help you. Oh, that's excellent news. Thank you. We will wait. Do you trust her? 
Not in the slightest. Even her smile is fake. This woman wallowed in other animals' secrets until she became one, too. That's exactly how I feel. Anyway, now that we're here, we can take a better look around. Just what I was thinking. Oh, so now we probably need to look at the books and the stuff. But first, we're gonna look at this book. Clues. It was probably that Natasha worked at the... Yeah. And then Papal. Uh, Madame Savas, crocodile, female. Her smile is fake, her story is fake, but the danger is real. Savas and Natasha did not only know each other, but had a serious close relationship. Yeah, that's what I said. Not even Savas could trace every piece of Natasha's obscure past, even though she tried to utilize all of her connections and influence in the matter. It touched her deeply when Natasha, whom she loved like a daughter, left the Nile for Ibn Wessler. The Nile Knight is an ancient culture gone extinct. Extinct. It used to be a huge substantial empire in, in the southwestern tropical region of the wilderness. One famous still living representative of this culture is Madame Savas, the legendary spy master and courtesan. The Great Bird Flu, or the Great Avian Plague, was an epidemic that spread to the entire continent of Altera and killed almost 40% of the world's av avian population. In Clawville, the disease wreaked havoc, killing almost 50% of the city's avian population. Finally, the bird flu was subdued by a vaccine developed by aviary and the establishment of several hatching houses, but the damage it caused hasn't been repaired even to this day. After the Great Bird Flu, several hatching houses were established in Clawville. These places were maternity wards, orphanage, ho hospitals and homes for new mothers. But first and foremost, their most important function was to revive the city's avian population. The enterprise was slow but successful, and today almost a third of uh, Clawville's population consists of several different species of birds. Including us. Wait, are, are chicken birds? I'm not sure. Okay, let's look at the clock. Something about this clock that is weird. Oh. So it is indeed something cold. Something, something. So I need to put in a specific time. Okay, specific time, specific time. Beautiful pieces for sure. They must be worth a fortune. I don't know why that's the conclusion we just drew. Okay. These books are here for a reason. They yeah. mean something. Yes. These books are okay, so one forty nine seven seven forty nine one key to the animal mind forty nine death of the horses these book and then slime and punishment Owls don't blink. I'm just gonna check if something happens if I click on them. No, so 749. 749. Let's see how smart I am here. Seven. Eh? 49. God dang it, I am brilliant. A hidden door. Who'd have thought? Well, Oops. This. I have it on autoplay and still I click like an idiot. Why isn't a key good enough? I mean, you can take that with you. But riddles can be solved by anyone. I don't think many animals get to be in this room, Marty. And the other thing is... Maybe she wanted us to find it. Exactly what I'm thinking. Who knows? Anyway, we're going in. Okay. This room is not like her at all. The other must have been for show. Marty, this is the reality. We're talking about a professional spy. A former spy. Still, if anyone knows how to mask her real face, it's her. Well, you think this is who she really is? Cold, dark, and tiny. And full of secrets. Well, if she's got the secret to why my mouse keeps dying in this game, then I would love that. Uh, hang on, I'm actually gonna... Turn this on for this one. Walls. Uh, this place gives me the creeps. Me too. We better get out of here before she comes back. We've just barely set foot in here. Now hang uh, on just a second. Names, numbers, dates. Oh, furry gods. 
Do you think they all belong to the brothel? Hell no. Half of it is a matter of national security. What did we step into? You know what? I don't care, Marty. I'm too old for conspiracies. The only thing that matters to me is to find out what the furry hell we're doing here. And what it has to do with Natasha. Sure. Somebody started typing a letter, but left it unfinished. What does it say? Number 2947222. Report about separatist group movements. Damn it. Don't even read that. What? Why not? I don't know about you, but I don't want to get caught up in the royalist separatist conflict. What you don't know can't hurt you, right? Uh, I can't even recognize you, boss. Where did you put your sense of and adventure? And we need to know to figure My out the mystery. My adventure has retired. Leave it alone. Okay. Oh my freaking god. Freaking mouse. Why? Hang on. Okay. Unfinished letter. Separative movement. That can't be good. What else do we got? We got type of strange book. This has got to be it, Marty. Look at the missing page. Oh, that's the oh names! God. Look at the names. Yeah, the ladies and their guests. Damn. What this means, Marty, is that the most influential people in the city had been Natasha's patrons. Some even from the royal family. This book could destabilize Clawville. At least the Clawville we currently know. You think this is behind everything? Somebody's blackmailing Natasha because of this? That could easily be the case. But something still doesn't fit. That piece of a painting. Sonny? If there's even a small chance of... Sonny. What? There's another familiar name here. What are you talking about? Let's see if I can see an SN. Oh, heck. Clucking hell, Sonny. Molly? It's probably someone else with the same name. So that's why Natasha told me they'd known each other for a long time. They worked what, together at boss, the brothel? I can't believe it. All those stories about her past. Listen, Bosberg, Molly loved you, right? Isn't that what matters? Marty, please shut your fucking beak right now or I'll shut it for you. Okay, boss. I'm sorry, but... Just shut the cluck up. We've caught them sneaking around me. Oh, but I didn't get to look at the pictures! I see, madam. Oh, back off, ladies. There's no need for this. We don't want trouble. No, maybe you don't. Unfortunately, trouble has found you, gentlemen. Madam Zabos, we needed to know the connection. What this place has to do with Natasha. And... And? And my wife. Filthy cops? He's talking gibberish. May I shoot him? No, not yet, Miss Diamond. I'd be very sorry to put holes in your lovely striped skin. But believe me, baby, I will. I've always wanted to know if diamonds are bulletproof. Please, madam. It'll all be over in a second. No. We have received different orders, Miss Diamond. Stand down. Oh, I see. The pony does tricks on command. Well, I'm not surprised. That's enough, Marty. You knew who she was, didn't you? What she meant to me. Well, well, Mr. Featherland. Aren't you interested in your case anymore? No. All it took was a name from your past, and your professionalism drowned in the mud. Stop playing games with me, Zavos. What does all this have to do with Molly? Nothing at all. No, she was just a little bird among the many who sought refuge here. You forced her into this. You'd love to hear that, but until she met you, she was one of us. Just another... You clucking... Sonny, no! Uh-oh.
But I didn't get to look at the pictures. I think I was dreaming. But it wasn't the kind of dream you'd want to remember. Oh! Dark and painful. Then the suffocating smoke woke me. It wasn't fried eggs, that's for sure. Where was I? What happened? That treacherous crocodile. Then I saw Marty, who looked as horrible as I felt. Well, I've always wanted a romantic sea voyage. God damn it. I knew I shouldn't have gone along with this. Marty, I told you you could get out any time. <laughs> and you knew damn well that I wouldn't. That I would never leave you in deep shit once I've joined you. You knew it, and you still asked me to do it. Marty, listen. You're a selfish bastard, Sonny. And you drag everyone around you down with you. How long was it till retirement? 120 days? 121. But you just couldn't sit still on your ass, could you? Well, take a good look around, boss bird. This is you. And this is what follows you. Just this clucking misery and dead bodies. Do you understand? You have nothing else to offer but suffering. <sighs> Marty. And feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, you're great at that. I can't believe this shit. We're gonna die here on a goddamn blazing ship like roast chicken. Well, it's dramatic at least, just like you like it. Marty. What? I've almost managed to untie the knot. But if you keep thrashing around like that, we're really gonna die here. Ah, oh, for cluck's sake. Fine. Work your magic. Until then, I'm gonna say all the prayers I know. You better. Okay, this is kind of a pickle that we have gotten ourselves into here. Uh, ladder, flames, ropes, Marty. We'll be fried chicken. I hope there are spices in those barrels, at least. Huh. Uh, start end. Okay, uh... Hang on, hang on. Marty? Oh, piss. Uh, what do I do? So you go here. You go... Uh, up, then down, then here, then here. I have to do this fast. Before we become fried chicken. Here and then up and then here and then ha and then ha up here and then there. So what now? Now we run and swim. I can't swim. Well, you better learn fast or you'll die. I'm not gonna drag your fat ass to the shore if that's what you're hoping. <laughs> well, I shouldn't have brought this many guns with me. Throw them away then. Never. <laughs> don't throw bullets in the flames. Nah. We we'll get shot again by ourselves. Would be your undoing. Cluck you, Sonny. We have to now is not the time to argue. Well, Let's get out of here. After you, boss bird. <laughs> that furry fucking clucking god damn. Yeah. Listen, Marty. What? What you said on the ship. What? What about it? You were right. I knew this would happen. Or something like it. I dragged you into this deliberately. Because I'm not enough on my own. Sonny, cut the crap. No, I'm serious. I knew I couldn't do this alone. I needed you to... Well, to look out for me. I don't need this, alright? Stop playing the wounded soul. I don't fucking care. Fair enough. You're right. Hell yeah, I'm fucking right. I'll, uh, shut up now. Good. Well, 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 look where we are now. Seems like we're on some, some harbor or dog, or what do you want to call it. Molly's name popped up where I expected it the least in Madame Save, uh, Save's book. Yeah, yeah. Save's tried to do away with us, but why? Is she in cahoots with Ibn Westler? I actually don't think so, no. Marty's right, I was an extremely selfish bastard, but there's nothing to be done now. We're already here, and I have a feeling he's gonna start by my side. Stand by my side until the very end, as always. Typical Morty. 
who will riddle your feathers with holes without a thought if she has to. Ah, that's not good. Captain Marsh? Who's this guy? It's a capybara! He talks like a real pirate and smells like one too. Ah, and then it's probably the dogs. Am I right? What? Is Piss, I probably missed one here. Here lives Captain Marsh, who probably never saw a real captain, but is still one of the most ri righteous fellas I've ever met. Ah, oh, there he is. You've seen better days too, haven't you? Mm-hmm. You know, I have a feeling this night's just getting started. We were almost finished. Yeah. You don't want to quit, do you? No, Sonny, I don't. Thanks, partner. Yeah. You can swim after all. Yeah. Or the river spat me out. Well, what about your guns? Did you throw them away? Hell no. Where they go, I go. And where I go, they're coming with me no matter what. I'm seriously amazed you're still alive. Yeah, sure. Pluck me. That's old Captain Marsh. I thought he died 50 years ago. I think I must have hit my head pretty badly. Say, isn't that Captain Marsh? You see him too? Oh, thank the gods. Oh, 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 lads. What the hairy devil are you doing out here? Isn't it a bit cold for a swim? It was warm on the ship, at least while it was burning. I bet it was. Arr. Hey, Captain, Arr. how's it hanging? It's hanging all right. Arr. What about you, lovers? What was all that ruckus, eh? Well, I think someone tried to kill us, Captain. Again. Come on, Boise. There's nothing new there. Yeah, old rust can't be scraped away. Did you see anything, Captain? Arr, of course I have. A burning ship. Then two cocks suddenly learn to fly. And even swim, by God. Oh, what a time to be alive, eh? <laughs> you haven't changed a bit, old man. Sure I haven't. I'm steady. Like the Sea of Clawville. Yeah, except that Clawville doesn't have a sea. Of course it does, laddie. Just not here in Clawville. Okay, okay. That's too much for me. Huh! Uh, hang on. Just want to keep tabs on this. The captain is a much greater legend than will ever be. Everyone just calls him the captain, though he most likely never left the shores in his life. He's an innocent guy indeed, but maybe he saw something useful. Well, let's ask him about that. Tell me, Captain, do you hang out here all the time? This behind me is my ship, lads. Or at least, it's a ship I'm living in at the moment. It's not mine, you know. And what do you do? I stand here and watch the sea. The sea? You mean the River Times? River? <laughs> Arr, that was a good one, boy. Okay. A black car stopped not far from here. A rich-looking car. Shiny and all. Yeah? What else? Two big lads stepped out of it. One of them was looking like some kind of cow. The other was a cat. A big cat. Oh, the bouncer and the henchman. I don't blame them. It's not something you see every day. I swear on all the saints of the sea. Arr. Just a wild guess. Was it a ram and a bobcat? Arr, exactly. There you go. Are you friends of theirs? Well, an acquaintance. It's the bouncer of the Tsar Club. And the goon that was hanging around Ibn. Plumy gods. Save ass answers to Ibn too. Or at least they're connected. Yeah. Oh, arr. that sounds exciting. He's the old timer. This uh, Ram fella, what did he do after watching us? Arr, nothing at all, Eddie. When that lovely ship started to sink, they got into their pretty car and got away like bats out of hell. So they didn't see us swimming to shore. 
I wouldn't know that. Uh, what now? I don't know. We can't go to the station, that's for sure. Well, we agree on that. I think I broke a rib or two. My sight's getting blurry. Pluck me. You know what this means? Oh, no, no. I'd rather go blind than go to Bubo's. We have to, pal. I'm not your pal, especially after tonight. Come on, we got no choice. <sighs> well, we survived the burning ship. I guess we'll survive the madman, too. Don't be so optimistic. Okay. Do you know anything about the place called the Sweltering Nile? Of course I do, me boys. But they don't really tolerate folks like me there. Not surprised. Hmm. Have you heard anything unusual about it? Arr, sure I have. They have the most beautiful wenches there, laddie. Like sirens of the sea. And they're willing to do anything for you. If only I were a spring chicken like ye are, I'd be already running over there. <laughs> well, actually, Captain, that's where we came from. On a burning ship? Bloody hell! You know how to live, lads. Ah, we're doing our best, Captain. Hey, you be! Arr. Have you heard the name Madame Zavas? Arr. When I was young like ye, they were talking about a gorgeous crocodile with that name. Aye, beautiful and deadly. Just how I like my women. Ah, ah me too. It's her, yeah. Less beautiful now, but just as deadly. Her, she has something to do with the burning ship, aye? You're uh, quite the detective. Arr, so I've been told. Okay. Oh, we got some info on an unknown. Uh, Boo -boo, Boobo's a true institution. He kept most of Clawville's gangsters intact and alive, and sometimes he even helps cops who like to get repaired unofficially. But right compensation, of course. Uh, Morphinist, a uh, neurotic, old and ugly, but he's uh, an old friend from the golden days of the chicken police. I feel sorry for him, but sometimes I think he's the only sane figure in the whole city nowadays. Where was the... Oh yeah, right, it's about the person I don't know anything about. And I can't click it. Places! Boo Boo's place! Old Bubo's apartment is also his office, and I'm sure it's not legal in any way. Uh, almost like in my case. Of course, my apartment is not full of organs and limbs, as far as I know, at least. Well, well, well. Lawville. He tried it again, but I'm still alive. Now we can go to Bubo's place. In fact, it's the only place we can go. 